Cross my heart in hopes of time Welcome to my dark side Turn night around In an effort to demonstrate just how powerful he actually is He refers to this spell as the power of a future night of rounds However, his attempts to injure Sid continue to be fruitless because Sid is easily able to shrug off his attacks. This makes it difficult for him to succeed in his goal. After witnessing this, Princess Alexia has a newfound admiration for the formidable power that Sid possesses, despite the fact that she's not yet aware that he is in fact Sid, the person that she has taken as her fake boyfriend. Sid, on the other hand, makes fun of Zenon by pointing out that his apparently tremendous ability as a future knight of rounds is not nearly as advanced as he is a fighter. This causes him to become enraged, and he rushes towards Sid, who, despite his best efforts, continues to avoid his attacks. After witnessing this, Princess Alexia is astounded by his extraordinary abilities. However, she is surprised to discover that his fencing is not significantly better than average. She makes a comparison between the sword style that was utilized on her own, expanding on how much she had strived to be like her sister, but had always been derided by people for not coming up to her sister's standards. Exactly at that instant, she has the sudden realization that Sid is the only person who has ever possessed a fencing style that is comparable to hers. Sid is currently continuing his battle against Zenon, who had previously reached his breaking point in the conflict. Zenon is curious about finding out the truth about Sid's identity, and he issues a challenge to him to come clean about it, because he notices that Sid possesses a great deal of power. At this point, Sid reaffirms to him that they are the Shadow Garden, a group whose primary objective is to track down and apprehend people who live and roam within the shadows. Zenon decides to take some drugs that will give him an increased capacity for strength as a last-ditch effort. He goes through a change as a direct result of taking the pills, which causes him to become a more ferocious warrior, who refers to himself as the Third Awakened. He is of the opinion that only the people who should be permitted to participate in the rounds are those who are able to exercise control over the power that he possesses, and not let it slip from their grasp. After that, he reveals a force that he calls the power of the Almighty and causes it to be released. After the enormous effort that Zenon put forth, Sid is offended that Zenon would think of himself as God because of all that he has accomplished. He views this as an insult to the Almighty and an act of blasphemy against him. In a fit of rage, he charges at Zenon and immediately begins to deliver vicious blows to him. Sid is adamant that there is no way to achieve all-powerfulness through the utilization of a power that was not one's own to begin with. Before he unleashes his final move, he tells Zenon the story about how he had tried to protect himself from being hit by a nuclear weapon. But instead, he ended up turning himself into a nuclear weapon. Zenon is shocked to hear this. After that, Zenon watches as Sid performs his finishing move. He calls this power his almighty power, and it is the power that transforms him into an atomic being. It also enables him to vaporize Zenon, which is what he means when he says it. Princess Iris is present when the explosion occurs, and she observes the site where it took place after it has already occurred. In the hopes of finding her sister, she doesn't waste any time and dashes off in that direction immediately. Princess Alexia, on the other hand, showed no signs of being shaken or affected in any way by the explosion. As soon as Princess Iris finally gets a look at her sister, she is overcome with excitement and rushes to embrace her in joy. The following day, Princess Alexia resumes her regular routine by going back to school as she does every day. She is with Sid, who has assumed his former identity as a student. She goes on to describe her struggles to Sid, who doesn't seem particularly interested in hearing about them. At that precise moment, she shows her appreciation to him for the compliment he had previously paid to her fencing technique by expressing her gratitude. She assuages his fears by assuring him that she has reconciled her feelings regarding her fencing technique, and that she now appreciates it. Then, Princess Alexia begs Sid to continue pretending to be in a relationship with her for a short while longer before he leaves. Sid declines her offer, and this causes her to smile, weirdly. The members of the Shadow Garden who report to Lord Shadow, the leader of the organization, compliment him on the many achievements he has achieved. They are operating under the assumption that one day all of their opponents will be vanquished. They are concerned about a number of things, one of which is the recent impersonation of their organization by individuals who are unknown to them. 
Despite this, they are certain that those responsible for these scams will be held accountable in the end. Meanwhile, Princess Iris has recently gained knowledge about the cult of Diabolos in the Shadow Garden. And as a result, she has reason to believe that the something sinister is taking place. She's under the impression that there is some sort of link between them. As a consequence of this, she comes to the conclusion that a new research team should be established, and that Glenn and Marco should take the helm. On the other hand, back in the school, there's a girl who is wandering around with a stack of books in her hands, and Sid unintentionally blocks her path, which results in the unfortunate event of her dropping the books that she was carrying. Despite this, he extends his hand to her in an attempt to help her stand, but she does not respond and appears to be rendered speechless by his presence.